So what differentiates occluded storms from cyclonic storms? It is the later part of this theory. So remember, this theory has come from air masses. It's called the polar front theory, or the Bergen School theory from Bergen, Norway. And this theory started us out with air masses, then went to stationary fronts, cold fronts, warm fronts, occluded fronts. Now we're getting into polar front theory for cyclonic storms, which is what they were really um, researching and then backed in all the rest of this theory. It's really modern meteorology just starting about a hundred years ago. So this came out of unique observations that were from 40 to 60, 65 degrees latitude. They weren't even studying tornadoes or hurricanes yet. That hadn't even come into view. Um, but modern meteorology really started by studying these mid-latitude um, cyclonic storms. When you think about these storms, you might just think about the winter, but you really shouldn't. Um, in the summertime, these storms can form closer up to the 60s because, again, the warm air from the equator is really pushing everything back up into the polar regions during the summer. But then during the winter, that cold air can come down into the 40s. So that's where we see it more often. Um, the polar front theory evolves out of the three cell theory that we just learned a week ago. So we had talked about the Hadley cell, the polar cell, and the feral cell. This polar front theory comes right out of um, the polar cell and the fact that the polar cell takes up from 60 degrees north latitude or 60 degrees south latitude to the poles. That 60 degree is, as you may remember, a very, very uh, important global boundary between the cold air of the poles and the warm air that has moved up from the Hadley cell and moved up from the equator. So this is a, a very important line. You already know about the screaming 60s, a lot of low pressure, semi-permanent lows in that area that are separating the cold polar air from the warm subtropical air. Um, that area, we're going to explore that polar front and the kinks and the waves in that area. Like I said, you remember this from the Hadley cell and the polar cell. The polar front, like I mentioned, is right up around the 60s and it tends to have waves in it. We're going to explore that. And we're going to explore how we look at mid-latitude cyclonic storms, what we call cyclogenesis, via the polar front. So in these observations of these unique storms from the 40s to the 60s, the Norwegians put together that the source of this, the source of all of these storms, was the polar front because it has such a temperature gradient and has the potential to form stationary fronts very easily. So it was really a perfect combination of a high pressure area that is coming down from the pole regions and a high pressure area that is coming up from the 30s and that lends itself from high pressure to low pressure having areas of lower pressure along a stationary front. So two highs going in opposite directions um, that are next to a stationary front. Now you might say, why are they in opposite directions? And it's all about the Coriolis effect. This warm air coming up from the um, equator is coming up from the equator and turning right. And this cold air coming down from the poles is coming down from the poles south and turning right. So they are going to head in separate directions. And there is going to be lower pressure along this line because everything is moving from high pressure to low pressure. So it starts with a polar front. And then it moves to a frontal wave. 
Now, what this is saying is that the um, surface stationary um, uh, stationary front has a polar front up in the upper levels above it because we have studied that from the feral cell. I'll just go back there for a second. We've studied how this air will, um, will come up and then sink at the poles and come back down again. So we know that there's a polar front that is at the surface and we know that there is a polar front up in the upper levels. And so what we're saying here is that that wavy polar front in the upper levels can produce a wave along the surface as well. So there's a slight upper air nudge that nudges the cold air down and as a result of pushing the cold air down, it pushes the warm air up a bit and nudges that from a stationary front into more of a cold and a warm front. Along this way, yeah, you're going to have that low, right, that has really, that has really strengthened right in the middle there. And you will have some precipitation in there as well on both sides of what's becoming a cold front and a um, warm front. An open wave happens anywhere from 12 to 24 hours later. Now suddenly you've got a low and the um, more dense cold front starts to chase after the warm front. So you see the occlusion starting to happen here and the warm sector between. You see where as this warm air is lifting, you'll get precipitation along that boundary. And you'll see where as this cold front is kicking up part of the warm sector, you'll see precipitation there as well. The fourth step of the six steps in cyclogenesis is the initial occlusion. And what we say is that here's the initial occlusion. The cold front meets up with the warm front here. The low surrounds that area. And the warm sector is getting squeezed. It's starting to disappear and get secretive, and it's going up. And as it does that, it fuels a really um, fierce growing storm here. As you can see, that this storm is moving from west to east, right? Here we're over the Great Lakes, then we're past the Great Lakes, then we're out into the Maritimes. As it's moving there, this area will get precipitation from a warm front, a bit of a warm sector, and then the cold front will slam into it. When this area is all occluded, it gets a, um, a really fierce storm in there. And the most precipitation is going to be up in the northwest of the low in here. So here is our initial occlusion. The warm sector is being lifted up and in. It is providing latent energy and also kinetic energy as the warm sector gets squeezed and pushed up. That's kinetic energy as well there. That's a cyclonic storm that can last a while. The advanced occlusion, theoretically, this storm will start to break down here, but that's not what we see in observations. And that's where a lot of the research is coming in there. How does this storm last when theoretically, this should start to wall off the warm sector and keep it away from the low so that there's a lot of research that needs to happen here. When you see the comma cloud forming on goes, you should think, well, you know, that storm's starting to break down, theoretically. But in actuality, many of these storms get and stay just as fierce when they're in a comma cloud. Finally, the, um, the low, excuse me, the cutoff low is just cut off from all warm air. And with that cut off from the warm air, the energy starts to dissipate and that storm starts to break apart. You no longer see the comma cloud and then you know that the storm has been 
pushed away from the warm air that is its fuel and it starts to dissipate. Six steps, six steps to cyclogenesis. The stationary front, the frontal wave, the open wave, the initial occlusion, the advanced occlusion, the cutoff low. Know your six steps, okay? Beautiful example of a pineapple express comma cloud from um, from Hawaii called the Pineapple Express, just a river of air, a river of air. It's amazing. Coming in and forming a cyclonic comma right off the Pacific Northwest coast, dumping an enormous amount of rain in Yosemite. This closed Yosemite for almost a year due to flooding and, and so much reconstruction that was needed. So the snow is in the Northwest quadrant, but the rain is right in the um, in the eastern quadrant of the storm. This is a really interesting southern hemisphere. Look at this. This is 65 degrees south southern hemisphere, 70 degrees south southern hemisphere. And this storm is not in a counterclockwise comma. It is in a clockwise comma, right where it should be, right at the 65 degree mark. So that is a southern storm for, um, to, for you to see that reversed comma cloud. Um, go over your six steps there, and I will see you on the other side.